and welcome to India Show Reviews. I am your host, Norman Sanso. Joining me today is Silver Quill. The reviewer has no clothes. What? Oh, snaps. Um, uh, uh, look to the left. It's a fair heart songs. <laughs> Silver, do you, do you want me to draw you on clothes or no? Technically, I'm naked every time I appear on screen. Oh my. So, yes. Except when I'm wearing costumes. So, yes. That's yeah. right. Try to get that thought out of your head. You're going starkers. Oh no. Well, do you want me to think about your nudity? I feel so free! Oh god. There's a fanfic about that. But <laughs> anywho. Uh, oh, we're traumatizing Norman here. This is fun! Uh, we're only a few, we're only, uh, less than a minute in and it's already fun! 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 Uh, fun! 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 Anyway. <laughs> In today's episode, we are going to review the 42nd issue of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, the comic book. So, in this issue, Pinkie Pie looks for Rarity's assistant in creating a storybook. Said storybook is going to be really good, really awesome, and, well, it's in Pinkie Pie's own style. It's very, very, very interesting. So, before we start, uh, a few things to note that... This will be Katie Cook's last work for My Little Pony until she comes back later on. And well, for that, this was a hearty farewell to a really good writer. Results may vary in terms of person. I know some people like her, some people don't. And uh, before we officially move on, we need to do our first impressions. And Silver, you are up on stage. Oh, I'm up on stage. I was a fright. The peril. There's a reason why public speaking is is scarier than death for many. Uh-huh. But this is a lot of this is a fun comic. This is the contrast between the organized and the chaotic, the the pre planning and the impulsive. Uh, it really gets. It's what Katie Cook I think writes best when you just take two characters and have them play off one another. She creates these wonderful stories. It's when she tries to force a conflict with multiple parts and big bads that I think things start to struggle. So this was a great way for her to call it good with a lot of humor, great styling. And I wonder how, how much she communicated directly with Andy Price to make this happen. I think it should be a lot. Like they should be working together, like the script and whatnot. Oof, that, that's been oh, interesting to see. Not the whatnot. <laughs> Anything but the whatnot. Uh, Seppi, what about you? I I really love this comic. Like, I didn't know this was technically Kay Cook's last comic. Well, you know, up until apparently she came back for something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I love this comic. I, I didn't even, like, read it, to be honest. I just looked at the visuals because they were so amazing. I love the references to, like, Peanuts. I love the fairy t- cook, bleh, fairy book story, like style that they were going for like at the beginning of it they play around with the colors they even play around with different mediums going as far to use like um you know claymation models and whatnot to like make the characters and then they make cute little yarn figures oh, i love it yeah this comic here is an amalgam of multiple medias like they done it in the show before with uh, I think a good example is the Pinky Pride, where Pinky and Chi Sandwich were battling for, well, party supremacy. So that's one good example. Uh, another one would be, hmm, is there any other besides that? Uh, well, I think. Well, they also Rare. do like a comic book style, like both like a you know Sunday morning comics and uh, you know like comic book comics. They, they do a lot of stuff with this. I love it. Ah. And Rarity Investigates. Let's not forget that. Ah, uh, yes. yes. They changed Tony's mm-hmm. style. And I think, um, in episode 100, um, Size of Life, uh, it's, it's a short, uh, blur, but you have the crew at the show throwing themselves in horse mask. So, yeah. <laughs> They're trying to get that sweet, sweet, non-existent horse fame. Yep. <laughs> uh, but anywho. Oh my god, we're horse famous. Rat silver! (laughs) Er, my gosh! That's almost like actual fame, but not really. But anywho, with first thoughts out of the way, we can 
jump into the comics. So as per usual, if you haven't read this comic yet, uh, we suggest that you do because we are going to spoil said comics. So anywho, we start off the comic with Pinkie Pie scaring the bejesus out of rarity. In other words, Tuesday. Oh yeah, true, true that. So Pinkie has an emergency and for the second time in Pinkie's life, she does not know what to do. And she needs to get a gift. And said gift is for Maud, was it? For a friend. She only says that it's for a friend. Ah, yes, my bad. So it's for a friend. And she goes to Rarity. And, well, Rarity asks what does this friend like and whatnot. And Pinky describes the certain things. I do love that, that Pinky has a ranking of gift, gift givers. She's the third best, and Rarity is the 37th best. Wow. So I, who's the first and second best? Well, considering that Celestia gives you the gift of the sun every day. Yeah, she read a gift first. I mean, she's got to get some sort of props. What about the second then? The second best, uh, well, Princess Luna gives you the gift of the night. Yeah, it doesn't count. Oh, what? <laughs> well, you, well, you'll be talking crazy talk. You'll be talking jibba jabba. Uh, well, but still, <laughs> uh, but still, our two heroes here go off to the working room and create that book while Pinky asks, do you still have that book? Um, it's still at your parents' place, right? And Rarity just flat out says no, while having a flashback of said event, the sad day which Sweetie Belle kablooies Rarity's room. I love that Rarity and Sweetie Belle's mom is just sort of looking over like, oh, she did it again. You could say, oops, I did it again. God, no, don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that joke was at the tip of the spear. <laughs> uh, mm, I, I, I don't know how to segue from that. I, I guess you can say, baby, hit me one more time. Uh, no, no. You could, no, you could just no. say that humor was toxic. <laughs> uh, I can feel Seffy's rage. Feed us your rage, Seffy. <laughs> I get enough of that from my brother. I don't need to hear any more of... <laughs> now we know how I to... didn't know your brother was a monster. Uh, but anywho... <clears throat> uh, yes, uh, with Britney Spears' reference out of the way, <laughs> uh, we... Uh, um, Rarity suggests that they create their own comic book. No, not really comic book, their own storybook. And get her supplies out. And Piggy Pie says it's a great idea. And... Everything on Rarity's workbench or work table is neatly placed. It's very organized. Pinkie Pie here follows this god rule of work. Everything needs to be in total chaos and creates a book. Yay. The, the book is A Princess Gets New Clothes, but not really. <laughs> wow, Pinkie, you know, by P.D. By Pinkie Deanne Pie. Yes. Oh, P.D. Wait. Could that be Police Department Pie? Um, oh my goodness. Pinky. Pinky yeah. Diane Pie. Uh, oh, sure, if you want to have the boring interpretation, <laughs> Shaw. Uh, I will have the boring interpretation. Shaw. Uh, Shaw. So, <laughs> you gotta add the Shaw. Shaw. Anywho, uh-huh. Rarity here is in utter shock by what Pinky is doing because one, do not mash the marker into the paper. You'll ruin the nip. Were you raised in a barn? Well, you can tell she's the tr- she is a true artist, so she's that upset when you mess with her stuff. Oh, yeah, like, those markers are not cheap. Oh, yeah. I'm not criticizing. I'm like, that, that's the truth. Yep. Those markers are not cheap, by the They're way. They're really comic markers for, like, five bucks oh, each. Oh, no, 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 no. She's not using the common markers. She's using the artist markers, like the Copic and... Yeah, I said Copic. Yeah. Like, I, I was going to say, like, from personal experience, yeah, I I get it. Markers are expensive if they're artist markers. I use Copic. Yeah, artist markers are stupid expensive. I seen Andy Price had a whole bunch on standby. Oh, by the way, if you check out one of the panels, Pinkie Pie's looking at a box of colored markers, and they're branded uh, Breckel brand. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing about Andy Price's work. He always throws in the best uh, references. You can make a game just going back and seeing everything he included. Yep. And for you at home do not know what Breckle is, uh, it's Heather Breckle, the colorist for the comic books. Of course, we did kind of skip over one part of Pinky's title. 
right by where it says police department pie. <laughs> yes, I'll be stubborn about this. Uh, it also says because generally ponies are naked. <laughs> N-E-double-K-I-D. Naked. <laughs> oh, wow. Pinky doesn't know how to spell so, that. Let's let all the ponies get naked. Well, didn't Applejack use that line on Rarity before? Uh, begging your pardon, but we don't generally wear clothes. Even though she wears... Purport, statistically, she wears more clothing than any of the maid six. True. It's a hat. Yeah. It covers her head. That's what I want, so though. Naked. So, anywho, continuing on. Um, after Pinky gets called by Rarity, Rarity says that they don't really need to create an original story. Uh, the classics are just fine because Rarity is going on the motto of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. While Pinky is going for the motto of we can make it more spicy. Look, I, I have to side with Pinky on this. Everything is better with giant robots. Oh, true that. <laughs> Did you see Pacific Rim? Was that not an amazing movie? I loved it so. I don't care what criticisms, the cheese and the sheer glorious physicality of the fights. It makes me swoon. Yes. Pacific Rim was good. Oh, but it's a manly spoon. But it's a manly spoon. Oh. <laughs> oh boy. But anywho, um, Rarity starts her work and creates, um, a cover art for said book. And the book is The Princess New Dress. And it stars a white, a pearl white alicorn with purple mane resembling Rarity, possibly. Thanks, M.A. Lars. I mean, thanks, Andy Price. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, you can't blame Larson this time, Silver. Be- I can blame Larson whenever I darn well Indeed. please. I just can't be right. <laughs> True that. But- yeah, especially since a bunch of people came to see your panel instead of his. Oh, wow. Uh, what? Man. Wait, wait. Refresh my memory. When was this? You you were going on about how like M.A. Larson like passed by your uh, the line for the... Um, oh, oh, that... Oh, that was something very different. That was, it wasn't a competition. Uh, I know, but you said, quote unquote, I, I can't remember what you say exactly, but it was like, ha, take that, M.A. Larson. I have more followers than you do for once. Uh, I don't know, uh, like no, what basically, just so our, our listeners are not scratching their heads, BronyCon last year, uh, we had a, after a Team Fortress 2 panel, Bunch of people lined up in front of uh, Lightning Bliss and my table in Artist Alley. And Emmy Larson happened to pass by. He was just checking stuff out. He was like, what is this line for? <laughs> and, and I was like, I've startled Emmy Larson. Are you Jenny? <laughs> no, no, he can't, he's probably not. He, this is probably an average con attendance yeah. for him. And in all honesty, I more remember the part where he snuck in some cream may- mayonnaise, cream chowder, what is it, is to the room, thinking it's a drink. I don't know. Oh, oh, that was at Nightmare Nights. He was walking out with a big cup full of sour cream. It's like, oh, please tell me he doesn't think it's yogurt <laughs> or or ice cream. Oh, watch out! He's gonna get a surprise. But anywho, I I, I never learned. It will always haunt me for the rest of my days. <laughs> anywho, uh, if we continue on with the story, uh, Rarity keeps. Oh, there's a yes, story. There's a story. There's a review, by the way. Uh, we we will carry on. It is. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh god, this, this is going to be the longest what? one. The longest one. Anyway, uh, as we continue on with the review, um, Rarity keeps working on the artwork, and as time goes on, said artwork, oh, you know, it, it's it's good, it's good. Uh, we introduced to the characters, the weaver, the princess, but Pinky doesn't feel that this is right. There needs to be more, and well, Pinky being Pinky, dumps color, like just dumps paint on it. And wow, Rarity's eyes are enraged, in full rage. Like, her eyes are red with anger. Actually, I don't know who has the greater talent. Rarity had used all those markers and the like, and Pinky just dumps two jars of paint and creates additional colors. I mean, it's like the ultimate faux pas when you uh, you cover someone else's artwork with your own. But dang. And Pinky is very honest in the next scene. Rarity would make the better weaver and she the better witless royal. True. Um, as uh, we carry on, um, Rarity agrees like, you know what, well, now that's settled. Let's get started. And Pinky says, I thought we were already five pages in. <laughs> and is that reference to... No, no. Oh, that's that's fourth wall meta humor. Yeah. 
And so they carry on and the art here starts getting stranger and stranger. So um, we mentioned earlier on where there's multiple art styles in the book. And we get from a childish drawing where Pinky drew it to a very Andy Price S style of art by Andy Price to very standard art to a very chibi cute art style where this is so strange to look at. The anime? That's not anime, my friend. That is not anime. Uh, what is anime? Is that when you draw an anime cow? Probably. Apparently. Don't have a cow. <laughs> uh, You're not Bart Simpson. You don't get to tell me what to do. Did you? Yeah. So anyway, uh, they start off the story with really strange artwork. And it started off a long, long time ago in a city far away. And Rarity doesn't agree with that line because, well, no, 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 no. Fairy tales with once upon a time, they have to. It's the rule. And you know what? I like Pinky's version. A long, long time ago in a galaxy, I mean, in a city far away. That's much better. Naboo was under an attack. <laughs> and I thought me and Qui Gon Jin could talk the Federation into maybe cutting them a little slack. Yay! <laughs> that's, yeah, that's all I'll think about. <laughs> uh, and so, um, they decide to work on it a little bit more. And as time goes on, Pinky has more ideas coming in, and Rarity doesn't like the spontaneous change in art. She has a consistent way of doing things. Suddenly having to work with someone who just keeps changing art on a whim is very distressing for her. Can't say I blame her. I mean, my God. Yeah. It's like, when my father, he came up to me after like a recent art piece I did on, like, based on Bob Ross and whatnot. He, he was basically like saying like, oh, I, I want you to try doing something in this style now. Well, it was like the super elaborate like art piece that was beyond my skill level. It's kind of like that. It's like, I can't do this. You can try. I don't wanna. Like basically you have to change your art style. No, that, that is very distressing, especially if you're not like at a certain skill level in art. True. But still, um, Silver? Well, I'm ju- I'm just admiring the the conflicting attitudes on a panel after Pinky has an idea, oh, God. where she says, Let, "Let's just try every art style." She looks adorable, holding up this huge stack of books, very cutesy pose, bipedal for those who get upset mm-hmm. about that. Uh, but she just looks adorable, and then you've got Rarity about to chug antacids. <laughs> A nervous breakdown. <laughs> this is the joy I get from Price's artwork. He he conveys this so beautifully. Yes. Oh God. It's. Let's try every art sounds like oh God. No, don't. It's not oh God. Oh Celestia, no. It sounds like a good idea in theory, but at the same time, dang. Uh, oh well, well. Andy Price has this thing where he conveys emotion well in artwork. Be that happy, joy, rage, confusion, sadness, and utter, what? He does it really well. And so, the, the next page we are introduced to amalgam of, well, Pinky says it best. Who's ready for page after page of artistic montage? Montage. Uh, We're having this song again. Need a montage. I, I think it's. Do you mean deco page? Sure, that too. Uh, oh, deco. Let's do this. So, but still, um, Rarity's in the swing of things because e- even though that she disagrees about doing multiple art styles, but she doesn't turn it down. She just goes with the flow, which she kind of likes. And we are introduced to. The first multi-bending genre thing, which is crochets. And Rarity says, oh, I look so cute. Because, well... It's Rarity. Of course she looks cute. Is she never cute, Norman? Uh, i rather say Fluttershy's cuter. Are you not entertained? But anywho, uh, we are introduced to Rarity and Pinky's epic yarn. Yay. Yay. Because it sounds like Wooly's... Uh, I'm sorry, it sounds like Yoshi's Woody World. Yay. Or oh, is it Epic Yarn? Hmm, whatever. Kirby's Epic yeah, Yarn. Yeah, Kirby's Epic Yarn. And 
Yoshi's Woolly World. I just like silver quilt. <laughs> Yay! See, it works. Uh, Even though people always say, oh, but it's cr- crochet. But that doesn't start with a Q. Unless you can force it. Work with me, people. Work <laughs> with me. Yes. But anywho, um, Pinky points out that, oh, uh, Princess Pinky doesn't have a horn and wings. And she tapes him on. So, yay. And this is the art style that is very interesting where I don't know how... Well, I, I have a general idea of how they did it, but they just do a paper cutout and put in the quilted ponies on front of the screen. Uh, Silver, help me out with this one because I, I'm having a hard time describing this. Basically, what you've done is you've drawn... is they drew the ponies as, in their comic forms, took a photo of these of these crocheted forms... With a backdrop and photoshopped it together very nicely. Yee. Yeah. I almost mean, you can't even see the green lines. Almost seamless. And oh. uh almost. I think Yeah, well, I mean, you just see the hard border where real life photography and comic art contrast, but that's all. Yee. And, and so it's a wonderful superimposition. Yeah, and this is why I like this comic a lot. Uh they, they dared to do something different. <laughs> uh, another Weird L reference. Are you stealing my catchphrase there, Norman? Nah, I'm using Weird L's. Uh-huh, sure. Well, where do you think Safi got it yeah, from? True that. I got it from my own mind, man. Oh, wait, sorry. Um, Weird L's is Dare to be Stupid. Sorry, my bad. Oh, Dare to be Stupid. da na 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 da na 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 <laughs> Anyway, we have a very tragic scene as... Uh, crochet Rarity gets decapitated. Yes, and that's because of Rarity don't want to follow the story because, guess, I would never, I'll be putting my professional reputation on the line. It's just a story, Rarity. As they go on, they continue on with another art style. And this art style is one of Andy Price's best work where he, well, he, he likes to do this style where he uses, uh, Copic colors to do the coloring instead of your standard how do I, sorry um how would I put this? Um for this scene here, most of the coloring are done by Andy Price himself instead of Heather Breckle doing the coloring. And yeah, it really shows. Which is really cool. But it's yeah, it and it's also cool. quite beautiful. Yes. <laughs> and as we go on, the the story is uh for you guys got no idea what the story is because we're not really telling the story of the book that they're doing. Essentially, it's The Emperor's New Groove. Uh, oh, the Emperor's New Clothes. Sorry, my bad. But it's still in the same sense. Does The Emperor's New Groove follow that too? No, right? No. Uh, uh, not my really. Bad. No, That's what's different. Em- there, there are no llamas in this. Yeah. <laughs> so why not? So it's The Emperor's New Close. So yes, we did mention that, but we just had to put our reminder because it's very confusing from this point on. Because we're not really telling the story, we're just admiring Andy Price's work here. In truth, this is sort of what's driving it. I mean, mm-hmm. if, you, if you really wanted to sum up the plot, Pinky and Rarity try to retell the story of the Emperor's new clothes, but they keep changing styles. Yes. The, the end. <laughs> yes. It's, this is not deep storytelling, this is Artistic, it is an experience. It's, in a some, certain way, we're like Rarity and Pinky just seeing all these different styles mesh. Mm-hmm. And if perhaps we're more like Rarity, having a nervous conniption, perhaps mm-hmm. we're more like Pinky, just having fun with it. Like I said before, I didn't even read this comic, to be honest. I just, well, I looked at the visuals like I didn't care at that point. <laughs> yeah, and with this one, like on page 11, the one we're on talking about... Uh, it's really beautiful, but Pinky has the perfect line here. If it can't add robots, you can't add another piece. So it's like, okay, fling, on to the next idea. And I'm getting a groove here where Pinkie Pie and Rarity each have a turn on a page. So you have those crazy setups where you have your introduction where Pinkie Pie does her quilt stuff and Rarity does her really pretty art. And then you have Pinkie Pie doing clay art. By the way, this is real clay, by the way. It's like what we mentioned before with the quilt. It's just a photograph taken. Like this, this here is just awesome. I, I like this. What's super intimidating is Rarity's look on that panel. If looks could kill, there'd be no more Ponyville. Yep. 
Well, uh, after Clay, we go to the classic traditional comic book style. Um, how would you call this one? Oh, let's see. Actually, there's a very there's a famous artist who does this. Who 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 painted the giant soup can? The giant soup can. Let's see here. Andy Warhol. Yeah. I don't know. I think Warhol did a certain. Oh, maybe not. He do he did different color renditions of Madonna. But still, it's in that um, it's in that vein of style. Rarity does does that, and. I, I want you guys to look at the bottom panel because said bottom panel is really interesting. It's is it plagiarism or is it art? Is it plagiarism or is it art? Uh, what? It's the title of a book on Rarity's shelf underneath. Yep. Yeah, the... I see it. The one that says price. <laughs> it isn't if the artist is well technically drawing it. Uh, it's an inside joke for artists because that is the thing that. Is going on in the art universe or whatnot, but I, I think it's mostly for this comic because he, the style that is going on is multiple styles from claymation to quilt and whatnot. So it's like, is it plagiarism or is it art? Because this is a comic book, it's a storytelling mechanism, but comic books can be art too. Have you checked out that Captain America post done by Rob Liefeld? <laughs> Uh, see a reaction. Okay, that, that, that's that's not art in my case. That's just pain. <laughs> uh, so then, where are you? Okay. I'm having flashbacks of biceps that are bigger than a man's head, <laughs> <laughs> and that aren't packs but tucked away aircraft carriers. <laughs> um, such a tiny head, and you've probably got like little snap off ankles or some such. <laughs> Seppi is confused. Oh, dare dare I show her the disproportions Yes, do it. Do it, do it, do it. Uh, But when you do that, I'll carry on. So next page, um, we change our styles again to, oh my goodness, um, fruits. If it works for the annoying orange, it should work for Pinkie Pie. Oh? Yeah, it's fruits. Well, you know. I'm sure they have a split view on this. Yep, and well... <laughs> but if you uh, put your rind to the grindstone, I'm sure things will turn up great. <laughs> yes, but still, um, very different play. <laughs> For those asking, I've just shown Safi the uh, Rob Liefeld Captain America. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, you guys... So you guys at home got no idea what we're doing. Um, I would like you guys to Google Captain America Rob Liefeld. It'll be the first picture on the Google. Or just disproportionate Captain America. Yes. I I can just imagine Captain America just having this tiny little head and his big ass buff body. Actually, when I think about it, this is the one style Price didn't include in this comic. Uh, Probably because... You know what I find funny? People get people dump on like Jay Foskett and the like for uh, their own style, which is its consistency that really defines an art style. Mm-hmm. And proportion, by the way. Rob Liefeld, good lord, th- there is there is no consistency. This but let ma- me guess, he he makes all the oh how do I explain? It? He makes all the boobs small and all the pecs big. Oh no, the, the, the boobs are even more disproportionate. It's oh wonder, boy! It's a wonder that everyone in Liefeld's universe doesn't suffer chronic back pain. <laughs> Let's just say that all of her female characters are in unrealistic poses where that spine don't bend that way. <sighs> I should not be able to see your breasts and your buttocks in the same shot. Yeah. You snap. Oh, that's anime. If a mirror is not involved, it don't work that way. But anywho, um, enough dilly-dallying about Rob Liefeld and his Captain America packs. Uh, we carry on to the next page where we are, where we go into a very classic traditional style of black and white. And we have a cameo from Heck Colt that could be Hellboy. Where is Hell Colt? I don't see a Hell Colt. 
one of the comics that Pinky's reading. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw it. Helco, oh boy. Oh, Next wow. thing you know, we're going to be getting drunk and dancing to love songs. Yep. And if, if anybody's go- seen the movie. I, I see Heck Colt. Yeah, Heck, oh. Heck Colt. Because this is still a kid's comic, and you can't say hell, but you can say heck. Yeah, true. But don't you guys learn hell in Bible school? Well, that that assumes everyone goes to Bible school. Uh... Stop assuming our religion, Norman. No, it's just because I remember that so well in the Simpsons episode, because Bart was so interested. Excited. In yeah, yeah. So I was just assuming that. Like, I was just thinking that. Okay, my bad. Anyway. Yeah. So, next page, we are introduced to The Walking Dead. Okay. <laughs> or Noir. Twilight looks really depressed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so supposed neat. to be the princess that upsets everyone. Yeah. And, well, as it goes on, um, Pinky has another brilliant idea <laughs> uh, to reduce this thing. And I like this one. I like this one a lot. What, the fold-out theater? Yes. Here's the thing. The comic collector means like, no, you can't rip out the page and fold it. No. Well, silver. Um, ah. There's always the part where you can go to Kinko's and copy it. Um, I don't know if Kinko's will let you do that. The companies have become much more paranoid about copyright. Yeah, really. Yeah, I guess, but it's for a good reason because you want to... I, I, I'm guessing that if you explain the situation where I want to copy this um, two pages, so I, I think it's just one. I just want to copy one page so I can cut it. Could you? It's just one page. And if they let you, that's awesome. If not, there's always a thing called a scanner. Though you can, though you can get really creepy and say, I need to cut something. <laughs> it's I'm either... Batman and I'm a J. It's, a, uh, it's either this page... Who are you? And then you get cut, picked up by the police. <laughs> uh, yeah. But so, anywho, um, we, we I'm get Batman. this. Batman. <laughs> Watch the Lego Batman movie. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so Lego. Strong. We're going very non sequitur this podcast. Yes, uh-huh. yes because, because we're just talking about the artwork. Like, right now, we're just talking artwork. I think, oh, well, no, it's, it's too late now. It's too late. So, anywho, um, you can cut out this page and whatnot, and yeah. We go on to another art style, which is the uh, Hanna Barbera style of art, which is um, Looney Tune style. And we go to Peanuts. We go to anime. And also, and also, Norman, before you anger somebody in the comments, it's not Hanna Barbera. It's uh, Warner Brothers. Oh, okay, Warner Brothers. Looney Tunes, yeah. What was the um? Yeah, okay. Uh, as we go on, there. The art style keeps changing, and by this point, Rarity really doesn't like the changing of styles on a whim. Then Pinkie Pie has a really a good idea, and it's to... Hmm, how do I put this one? Do you guys remember this one toy, or a scene on TV kind of gimmick where yeah. you have this pen and it vibrates? That sounds dirtier than it needs to be. I'm trying to keep my inner frat boy in check. It exists. Oh, uh, I'm sure it does. Uh, I vaguely recall it's basically supposed to be you just you just create really silly art. Yeah, and well, Pinkie Pie does that kind of art style, and it creates the quote unquote staple of any art style where he has um, awesome borders or words to his art style. If you bought a piece of art by Andy Price or seen his. Artwork done for fans. This is the standard work. And yeah, it's cool. The way he does it is different from what Pinky does, but still. And it's the end of the book. With everything done and finished, Rarity goes and says, I'm as much a believer of organized chaos as the next artist, but this is a complete mishmash of art crafts that I've only ever seen in my nightmares. Can't we do something more normal? To which Pinky can reply, I don't know what that is. <laughs> and I and I will say with Pinky on this one, I don't I've never met a normal person. I'm I'm convinced they're an urban myth. <laughs> Only available in Urban Dictionary. There you go. They're the uh, oh, what is it? The ultimate and creepy pasta. Someone who's normal. <gasps> dun dun dun. And of course when 
when Rarity asked the audience what color is the sky in her world, the wrinkles on her face and the trembling lip just, again, Price always conveys the best emotions. Yeah. <laughs> but why does Rarity want the tape, by the way? So she can get the dang book closed. <laughs> uh, all righty then. All right. So we go on to the next page where it's another fallover, which is rather creepy and... Yeah, this book has a lot of those. I like it. <laughs> I, okay, here's a here's a poll for you. Which side of Pinky looks the creepier? I open or I closed? Oh god, like both actually. There's no, there's yeah, both, both, both. I, 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 go, I yeah, both. I'm oh, gonna go with I, I open. And I'd probably have to go with uh the closed eye. Really now, I go with eye open because she's staring directly into my soul. <laughs> I say both because if you take a look see at, door, at that, like, there's no, yeah, yeah, no, just no. Yep. Anywho, we move on to the next page where everything is done and Rarity is about to blow a gasket and Pinky just says, you're making your grumpy face. Are you mad? And Rarity just gives up and says, you're lucky your scratter brain is so endearing. I kind of wish they had moved page 17 to page 3 just to keep the readers on their toes. 17 to page 3? Yeah, Pinky makes the suggestion upon seeing the quote-unquote completed book. Why, Pinky? Why? You, why? I don't know. Why, Norman? I don't know. Why did she do that? Well... I will say this, that this comic might get Pinky's attitude wrong sometimes. Mm. Sometimes people just put, try to make Pinky criminally insane. <laughs> like, like completely detached from reality. Uh, when really her funniest moments are where she just has a slightly alternate take on reality. Ah, uh, yes, that's true. Um, a good example of that is at Pinky Pride. You've seen that dancing alligator? That's just oh, insane, yes. yo. That was the most insane thing in that piece? Come on. <sighs> that's boneless. Uh, but still, um, P- Pinkie Pie rips page 17 to move into page 3, and Rarity just gives up. Like she mentioned before, uh, her scattered brain is endearing. Yes, and by the end, she's about ready to commit murder. Until Pinky, Pinky just much is forgiven the adorable. Yes. And with that, Pinky gives the book to Rarity. And Rarity just says, what? For me? Why? And Pinky explains that it's the anniversary of the day we first met. I kind of remember a conversation we had years ago about your favorite book as a filly and wanted to give you that. But Sweetie Bell said she blew it up. I wanted to double check if you still needed a new copy. I couldn't have known it'd be this great though. Look, a whole book we made together. So, oh, uh, that's just, oh, uh, Pinkie Pie Aww. is, this, this is what, I like about Pinky, like, she remembers the small detail that's so minuscule and unimportant, but in the grand scheme of things, it's really important. Well, to her, it's, we, we, our lives are made up of little things. <laughs> and as usual, Pinky knows how to destroy the mood by unorganizing Pink, uh, Rarity's workplace. So still, <laughs> with, <laughs> with Andy Price's great artwork, Rarity has that I want to kill you face, but still. Pinky thinks it's her hungry face. Yes. They should go for BFF smoothies, which I think is a fantastic idea. Why is there not a store called BFF smoothies? I don't know. Probably you should start one. (laughs) And with that, comics end. What can I say? This book is just too awesome. Indeed. So, um, final thoughts, I guess. Um, Silver, please. Well, like I said, we've taken a while to get through what is a very simple plotline because really the, the, the flair is in the artwork. We just love seeing all these different styles, all the, all the artistic. And so it's easy to miss how well the, the writing leads into that artwork. I've got to think that Katie Cook and Andy Price really were in close communication throughout this entire thing, trying to uh, make sure each joke led one into the other and gave Price the chance to show off his art style. Or perhaps Cook herself took some photos to help with the uh, the crochet and the Play-Doh versions. 
Also, didn't they say, like, a special help from, like, a Price's sister or cousin? Like, they mentioned, like, this one Let's particular person, also with the last name Price. Special uh, thanks to Alice, Alice Price. Price. That's his wife. Yeah, Alice maybe. Price. Is so that like probably... Price's sister? Maybe she did no, the no, no. crochet? Alice Price is um, Andy Price's wife. Oh. So there you go. You get to, you get not only an excellent duo, but you also get a husband-wife duo in this. I'm betting she did a lot of the photography. Probably. And at the same time, too, we always neglect to mention Heather Breckel in most of our reviews because we always, we, we say it once, we say it a lot of times that the coloring in the book is just good and we don't mention that a lot. But in this one where we are just talking about the artwork, she did a really awesome job from one section to another, from one art style to another art style. Like the, how do I put this? The transition from the different to the norm is consistent and it feels good from uh, leaving it to Andy Price to do his work while she does hers. And it's not immersion breaking, if you know what I mean. I hear you. She, Heather Preckle did a fantastic job. I, I don't know if there were parts that Price colored himself or it was just line art, in which case, hides off to Heather Breckle for that fold page with the terrifying pinkies. Uh, uh, let me double check because I can tell because, oh, uh, let's see, let's see, give me a second. How can, how can you tell? Did it, did it say? This is, yeah, this is Breckle's work. Oh, excellent. Well, she did a fantastic job. The idea of having to color that in and make it more eye catching, even as it is the scariest thing since <laughs> T-Rex first appearance. She's like, ah, oh, the terror! Here, I just need to focus on something that's scarier. I'll look back at Rob Liefeld's Captain America. <laughs> ah! Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But still, um, oh, my goodness. Uh, final thoughts, final thoughts. So, Silver, what did you think about Sid Comics? Well, I thought it's wonderful. It's a great way to wish Katie Cook a, a hiatus. She's coming back to write a divergence story. But that's really a special event. She's not the norm on the writing staff anymore, which I find sad. I had hoped she, I hope she'll get a chance to do more stories. Because though I have criticisms for some of her tales, more often than not, she did, she does an excellent job. One failure doesn't mean that she's terrible. I mean, we all have our ups and downs, especially on this show. I know I have a few ups and a few downs in between, but still, uh, we push on. And to say that Katie Cook's work is terrible is unfair. We remember the bad, but we also need to remember the good, like her Rarity and Applejack comic. That was highly entertaining. Like I mentioned, we remember the bad, the good, the bad, and the ponies. <sighs> sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Silver. We all, we all make do with what we can. Indeed. I will always remember Zen and the Art of Gazebo Repair. Oh, that's a good one. This is a good one. Oh, I, I, I also like her work on the, whatchamacallit, um, I, I'm trying to remember, um, no, 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 no. Cadence and Shining Armor. Love Actually? No, that's uh, actually... Nay Anything? Yes, Nay Anything. That is a really good one. I, I love that one. You, you really gotta start remembering that name, Norman. Nay Anything. It's not that hard to remember. <laughs> I have a lot of other things I need to remember, my girl. But anywho, um, Silver, thoughts? Well, I, I've, I've given all of my thoughts. It's just a very enjoyable comic. And Yee. Seppi? Same. Artist-wise, I love it. Alright, then as for me, uh, this is, this book is rather entertaining. For lack of story, it sure gives us a lot of awesome artwork from multiple styles that Andy Price did to the storytelling that Katie Cook does and from the coloring from Heather Breckel. This is just really, really awesome. And I'm sure glad that IDW greenlit this because I'm not sure if any other comic um, publisher would allow said kind of media or content to be uploaded. Other than that, it's a really enjoyable book. I would suggest that if you could get a physical copy of this, go ahead. The cover's awesome too. So, anywho, Silver, what shall you be doing next week? 
what shall I be doing next week? Well, I don't know. I might be having a hamburger. I might uh, be working on a favor. Oh, you mean what are we working on next week? Yes, that's what we. I said. Did, did I say we? No? You said you. Said you. Oh, really? Oh, my bad. Refer, so what? You said you, referring to me. All right, my bad. So what we? What shall we review next week, my friend? Well, I believe we've only got the finale left in Season 6, and with Season 7 steadily approaching, we might want to ask where we got to where and back again. Ha! <laughs> oh, I can tell Safi's just brimming with excitement to talk about this one. Yep. I actually love this episode, so yes, yes, I am. Okay, I, th- yeah. I thought I detected a note of... No, I hate this episode. I never liked Trixie. I never liked Discord. This episode sucked. No, <laughs> no, I, I actually really like this episode, and no, I don't actually think that towards Trixie, Starlight, and you know all the other ones I've mentioned. Yeah, Spike, and also wait, what eh, happened, to Spike? Spike's a mess, but besides the point. Anyways. Yeah. So yeah, uh, that's for next week. We are finally going to cover the finale of season six. It's been a long ride. Like, it has been a really, really long ride. I blame it on the holidays. <laughs> oh, blame it on the rain. Yeah, yeah, that too. yeah. Just hear the sleigh bells jingling, ting, ting, tingling too. Oh boy. But anywho, um, with that, we come to a close uh, next week will be a very fun episode I, oof, that's going to be a rough one but anywho when we come to that bridge we'll cross it so I have been Norman Sando I am Cecil Ventuil I have been Sapphire Hudson and we'll guys see you next week with another episode of the MBS show see ya adios bye my art No, next week's gonna be the end. What shall we do, Silver? What shall we do? Ah, oh, you gotta be fine. It's never the end, it's just the transition. We're all gonna die!